All right, I'm going to do another review on the Garretton Concert and Marching Band 2 Library of Sounds. And this video, I'm going to focus on the saxophones. One of the uh, biggest questions I've seen uh, regarding saxophone sounds is where can I find a good classical saxophone sound? And a lot of the, the comments I've seen said these sounds sound like uh, it's a tuned kazoo and a lot of the files that's not wrong mm -hmm. so uh what we'll do is we'll take a look at a few of the different sounds that come uh with the garretton libraries and we'll look at them individually what i have here is the second movement of granger's lincolnshire posy this is from an example i did for volume two of my book on band orchestration this is just the first few bars of movement two so what I'll do now is I'll play this in the default setting. The default setting in Finale is to use the sounds from the Garretton Jazz and Big Band. And this is the sound that most people will complain about. Mm -hmm. about you but that does not sound like a good saxophone section to me so let's do this I'm going to put this into studio view and we're just going to isolate each individual sound and again these are going to be uh, the sounds from the jazz and big band library and then I'll switch them over to the concert and marching band library so you can hear a difference so we'll start off with soprano saxophone That's really reedy. It's not very nice. So now let's do it on the alto saxophone. <laughs> about you but that doesn't even sound like that was recorded from an actual living breathing player that sounds completely computerized like something I would get in a basic MIDI file so let's go to tenor sax maybe it's a little better That is a little bit better. That file seems to respond to the dynamics on the page more than either the soprano or the alto, but it's still not a great sound. So let's go do baritone. Thank you. 
And that's just meh to me. I don't it I don't hear it really responding very well to the dynamics at all. And well, since Finale automatically defaults the bass saxophone to uh, a baritone sax, let's not do that. So let's go ahead and switch these over to the concert and marching band. So we'll do the same thing we did with the trumpets. So COMB, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six. I have to go through six layers to get to one solo soprano saxophone. Notice I only have three soprano saxes to choose from, only solos. We do not have a group option available for soprano saxophone. Okay, now let's take a look at the soprano sax and look at our range. Okay, we've got the nice low A flat, the lowest concert note. And I've actually extended this up uh, manually up to what would be a written high altissimo C. The actual file does not go up this high. I think the actual file will only go up to the high uh, written G, which would be the F here. Uh, but it does not go up near as high as it should. All right, so we'll load in alto sax. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now with alto sax, I have nine choices, group, group solo, and solo. And continue on loading these. Tenor sax, and again, I, with tenor sax, I have uh, nine choices. Group, group solo, and solo. Baritone sax. I've got six choices. Only two each of group, group solo, and solo. Bass sax, I do have the option of using a bass sax, which is really nice. So, but I only have bass sax solo. And that's probably okay because bass saxes are only ever gonna be in solo. And we'll go, and I've got one more alto sax to load. And we'll go ahead and we'll put that in solo alto too. So let's look at the ranges we have on these. So alto sax, again, mm -hmm down to the low D flat, it covers all our notes, and then it just goes way up high, and we've got an extra octave of altissimo up to what would be a altissimo double high F. Tenor sax, again, perfectly fine low note here, and I have extended the range of this upwards from where it normally should be, uh, up about a fourth or a fifth, Normally it would stop just like the soprano sax about uh, F, where you see my cursor there. Baritone sax. All right, baritone sax comes uh, already with the low A uh, as standard, which would be the concert C. And then we go up and have a fairly good altissimo range here. And bass saxophone, we've got standard low note there on a nice meaty low A flat. And we go up, and we don't really have much in the way of altissimo. We only go up to a high F. That would be uh, altissimo G, just a step above the normal range. And that's okay there. So let's go now, and we will um, listen to this with the new sounds. Thank mm -hmm. It's better than the jazz band sounds, but it's not great. It's still got a real pungency to it. 
So let's go and listen to each of the instruments individually. And we'll first, first start off with our soprano sax. Mm -hmm. It's a more pleasing sound, but listening to it, the one thing I noticed is there is absolutely no vibrato in that sound. Let's see if we have a controller to control for vibrato. So we go and open up our ARIA player, look at controls, and vibrato speed. I've got it at 54. Let's up that to about 80. Let's see if that works. Maybe it'll do something. a hint of vibrato there that is so faint that I can barely make it out. Hmm. Let's go on and listen to the alto sax. Let's see if this is better. I heard in that is it goes in and out it almost sounds like two different instruments are playing one good one bad some of the notes don't match some of the other notes now maybe that's just uh, me listening to it on smaller speakers but uh, it's not great there's no vibrato there there's very little dynamics so let's go on and listen to our tenor sax and maybe this is an improvement Thank mm -hmm. The tone is better than the jazz band version, but it just doesn't, it um, feels really mechanical. Maybe Barry's better. That's the first acceptable sound I've heard from either the the default jazz band or the concert marching band. The Barry sax sounds good. I wouldn't mind that sound. Now let's listen to bass. We didn't have bass before, but we have bass now. Thank you. 
what I find really interesting here is that very first note, that D, uh, that uh, E flat. Listen to that very first note again. There's a, a crack in it, meaning the player they recorded didn't play that note cleanly. My guess is what they did is they had the player play D natural, half a step below that, and just manipulated the note up a half step. The D natural on the bass sax, if the player isn't really familiar with the instrument, has a real tendency to do that kind of splitting. You actually have to, on an older bass sax, which I bet this is, you have to use the D palm key as an octave key instead of the thumb octave key. That tells me that they actually did sample this off of a live player. There's no way that they would get that kind of a flaw in just a computer uh, mock-up. So there, there's hope there. So let's go and play around a little bit with uh, the ARIA player here and see if we can get the whole thing sounding a little bit better. So let's go to our effects. Let's also see... Um, Look at our vibrato speed and all that on here. Uh, interesting that it has the bass sax's vibrato speed. You know what? When I was doing that earlier, I think I put the soprano sax's vibrato on the bass sax, which is why the bass sax actually sounded a little better. So let's... Um, Put everybody up there on that about 80% vibrato. So I take that back, soprano sax. You probably do have uh, some vibrato going. Now let's go to effects. This is going to be done in a concert hall and convolution over here. Let's do modern con uh, symphonic concert hall. And let's just see now. If this sounds any better now that I've added vibrato to everything and I've put a little bit of reverb and echo on. <laughs> It's not great. I'm going to change my human playback settings. Let's just see if this makes it a little bit more humanized. <laughs> does add a little bit more human element to it. There's some push and pull in the tempo there, and it makes it sound like it's closer to real humans playing. That said, the Garretton Concert and Marching Band saxophones are largely a miss in terms of sound quality. The baritone saxophone is pretty good. The bass saxophone is acceptable. Soprano, alto, and tenor, though, need a lot of work. It sounds like they recorded a soprano, alto, and tenor player who was playing not on a standard concert classical mouthpiece, but on a jazz mouthpiece trying to emulate a concert sound. And that just doesn't work. If they could get a legit saxophone, uh, classical saxophone player in there to play and really produce a much 
clearer sound. I think this could be a better sound library, but as is, saxophones are severely lacking. This is going to hinder composers who want to use saxophone in their writing, who don't want to shell out for some of the bigger libraries. And by the way, from what I've heard, even the big libraries, their saxophone sounds aren't much better. So no one has gotten around to making a really good saxophone sound library that can just plug right into something like Finale. So anyway, the Garretton Concert and Marching Band saxophone sounds are not great. They, they are usable, they'll work a little bit, but they've got a long way to go if they're going to be acceptable.